Hey guys, big news out of Nissan today. We're getting an all new Pathfinder and an all new Frontier on the same day. So if you haven't checked out the other video, be sure and do that. In this video, I'm gonna be talking simply about the Pathfinder. The Pathfinder has long been one of the most family-friendly vehicles in the three-row crossover segment. It's a little bit bigger on the inside than average, so if you're looking for something that's roomier than a Pilot, roomier than a Highlander, you might want to take a look at the Pathfinder. We don't know all the details just yet, but it looks like this is going to be fairly competitive with the Palisade and the Telluride in terms of interior room. But before we talk about that, let's dive into the exterior design. You'll notice that the Pathfinder is certainly more upright and more square, and I think a little bit more perhaps Land Rover-y than it was before. We certainly have a square, boxier, and more upright front end, and a very similar design to the one that we find in the rest of Nissan's truck and SUV lineup, but I think a little bit more attractive actually in the Pathfinder. Be sure and let me know what you think about the look down there in the comments section below. One thing that Nissan has been doing really well is nailing their styling, and I think they've definitely done that with this generation of the Pathfinder. Now there were some initial rumors that perhaps this generation Pathfinder might return to rear wheel drive, that's not the case. This is still a front wheel drive or all wheel drive option. And you'll definitely notice that with the front overhang. It looks a little bit different than something like a Ford Explorer or a Dodge Durango, which are rear wheel drive. But on the rear end, when the side profile, you'll really notice that sort of Land Rover-y, Discovery kind of look back there with the way that the last pillar is blacked out. And that also translates to the rear end design of the Pathfinder, which definitely gets a more upscale, more perhaps concept car look than we've seen from some of the Nissan product line before. This rear end design definitely is more my thing than what we see in the current generation Nissan Rogue. The other thing you'll notice is that all the LED elements are slimmer and longer, making this look a little bit wider than it did before. And we're going to have full LEDs at least available in the Pathfinder. It looks like LED headlights are going to be standard and available exterior features here. It lists expressive LED taillights, and I believe they're going to be full LEDs in this model. Again, we'll have to wait on some details until this vehicle is actually on dealer lots. Now, diving onto the inside, you'll notice a big departure from the current generation Pathfinder. I have to say that the current Pathfinder hasn't aged as well as I thought it would when it first launched. It is getting old, the current generation Pathfinder, but not necessarily that much older than the Pilot. I think the Pilot has aged a little bit better. But this Pathfinder is going in a totally different direction. You can see that we have an interior that it blends a little bit of Nissan Rogue and a little bit of Nissan Titan. Uh, we have some stitch dashboard components, the new D-shaped steering wheel that we find in a lot of Nissan products, and a big LCD in the dash, big LCD instrument cluster behind the driver as well. It looks to be running basically the same software that we see in the Rogue. Now, one thing that did surprise me is that Nissan didn't borrow the absolutely enormous screen that we see in the Armada. Instead, this has a little bit more of a conventionally sized and shaped screen right there in the middle of the dash. Obviously, we have three zone automatic climate control available, and we have the joystick style shifter and terrain selector knob that we see in some of the other Nissan products. Practical storage cubbies have long been a Nissan hallmark, so of course there are a ton of pictures in this picture deck uh, highlighting all the various storage areas in the cabin. One thing that struck me as a really handy feature, though, that they didn't really spend too much time on on these pictures or in their presentation is the second row. The Pathfinder was one of the first vehicles available in North America that had a second row seat that let you tilt and slide it forward while a child seat was latched into place using the latch anchors and the top tether anchor. For 2022, the Pathfinder is going to be able to do that across the second row bench, so it's not just restricted to the passenger side of the vehicle. That's something that we only see at the moment in a minivan, the Chrysler Pacifica, or in the Volkswagen Atlas. So if you don't want either of those two options and you're looking for something that has this same feature, then this is going to do the job for you. The only other vehicle in this segment that has a feature like this is the CX-9, but only on the passenger side. You can't leave a child seat latched into place in that fashion in the Highlander, in the Pilot, in the Telluride, the Palisade, any of those other options out there. Like most three-row crossovers, the second row of the Pathfinder will fold flat so you can put larger cargo inside, but unlike most three-row crossovers, the cargo area is four feet wide. So they say that you can put four by sheet goods of things in the back of your Pathfinder, making this a little bit more practical than some of the other options. And that will likely pay dividends for the third row. The third row is quite narrow in the Highlander, even though it has three seat belts back there. In the Pathfinder, it should be a little bit more accommodating for larger and wider folks, and of course, the ability to put four by eight sheets of plywood in your crossover. I don't know about you, but that is something that I actually want to do now and then. And outside of full-size SUVs, there are incredibly few vehicles that will let you do this. Even larger three-row vehicles like the Dodge Durango does not have that ability. 
Now, for some reason, details do seem to be a little scarce on that third row, but it is going to be a seven seat vehicle or an eight seat vehicle. And according to this spec sheet right here, we should expect 16.6 .6 cubic feet of storage space behind the third row. So certainly less than we find in some of the larger vehicles, but definitely a bit more than some of the smaller three row options. So something like a Kia Sorento is obviously going to have a little bit less cargo room back there, but you will find a bit more in the Kia Telluride. If you prefer captain's chairs and a seven seat configuration, that is going to be available and there will be a removable center console in the middle, but it's not gonna be a removable center seat like we find in the new Acura MDX. I do think that's a really handy feature in that particular Acura model. Back on the outside, one surprising feature for the exterior is that we have wide tires. 255 with tires look like they're going to be standard on all Pathfinder models. Those are some seriously wide tires. The Mazda CX-9 is the only other entry in this segment that has tires like that that are this wide outside of the rear wheel drive options. So some of the rear wheel drive options like the Durango and the Explorer have wider tires, but the Highlander and the Pilot certainly don't. The other thing that struck me interesting on this spec sheet is what's going on under the hood, and that's probably what you've all been waiting for. We have a 3.5 liter V6 engine. It's a refreshed version of the same V6 that we've seen before but we do not have a CVT anymore under the hood. So if you're not a fan of continuously variable transmissions, don't worry, this is finally gone. On the other hand, if you're not a fan of the same nine-speed automatic transmission that we find in the Honda Pilot and a number of FCA vehicles and of course the Range Rover Evoque, then you may not be a big fan because that's exactly what's replacing the CVT. The same nine-speed automatic that's in the Pathfinder, the Ridgeline, um, number of vehicles from the Chrysler envelope like the Jeep Cherokee, etc. they use the same nine-speed automatic. Now on the other hand, that nine-speed automatic has really aggressive starting ratios, so it is likely that zero to 60 times may improve, even though the power figures from that 3.5 liter V6 are pretty similar, 284 horsepower, 259 pound-feet of torque. It's also possible that fuel economy will improve because the ratio spread in that 9-speed automatic is absolutely enormous, and that's why so many car companies out there are using it. The final ninth gear is incredibly high to give you excellent highway fuel economy, especially at higher speeds. So if you're in a state like Texas where you're driving 85 miles an hour in some zones, then this is probably going to be giving you better fuel economy uh, than the average automatic that's a 7 or an 8-speed. On the other hand, the 9-speed automatic has not exactly been the smoothest transmission out there. So I'll be really interested to see exactly what Nissan's software does for this transmission. The latest software iterations from the Chrysler side of things, namely the Chrysler Pacifica, have really smoothed out the 9-speed automatic and hopefully a lot of those changes apply to this transmission as well. Continuing down the spec list, the available all-wheel drive system will have their seven position terrain mode selector. Uh, we're gonna get 3,500 pounds of standard towing ability, 6,000 pounds of optional towing ability. According to Nissan, they're calling this best in class, but that's mainly because they don't see the Dodge Durango as being in this category, even though it's basically the same size on the inside as something along these lines. Obviously, if you want to tow more, you're going to want to look at some of those rear-wheel drive options, the new Jeep Grand Cherokee L, the Dodge Durango. They are going to tow over 7,000 pounds, uh, but they obviously are not going to be quite the same thing as the Pathfinder. At 197 inches long, this is certainly going to be easier to park than some of those larger three-row vehicles out there, the full-size SUVs but it is gonna be a little bit longer than some of the smaller three-row options. The just over 12-inch LCD instrument cluster is gonna be optional. It looks like a seven-inch model is going to be standard. If you get the platinum version, then you're gonna get a 10.8-inch color heads-up display pretty much the same one that we find in other Nissan products out there. And then the infotainment screen, in case you're wondering, is a nine inch screen in top end models, eight inch in smaller models. I really had hoped that we would get that really gorgeous screen from the new Armada in here, but apparently that's not in the cards. All of Nissan's latest active safety features are going to be available on the Pathfinder. If you want the Pro Pilot system, you're going to want the SV trim or higher. If you want Pro Pilot Assist with NaviLink, that's going to be SL and above. Uh, it looks like Nissan Safety Shield 360 is going to be standard on all trims, including automatic braking with pedestrian detection, blind spot warning, rear cross traffic detection, 10 airbags, uh, driver alertness, and rear door alert as well. There's also going to be available blind spot monitoring, intelligent lane intervention, the front seat mounted supplemental airbag that's similar to other cars that we've seen for 2021 and 2020, where there's an airbag between the two front seats to keep you from bumping noggins. And then we're also going to get traffic sign recognition. 
At the moment, that's pretty much all that Nissan has said about the new 2022 Pathfinder. It is going to go on sale summer of 2021, and we'll probably know pricing details and some of the additional specifications closer to its on-sale date. Hopefully, I will be able to drive one before it goes on sale, but with the ongoing pandemic, you never really know. Hopefully, one will end up in my driveway, and I'll be able to tell all of you about it and how that new 9-speed automatic transmission behaves, and of course, how the second row seats work and what the third row seats look like. I'm really surprised that Nissan didn't give us too many details about the rear seating arrangements the Pathfinder, uh, but I expect them to continue being among the largest and family friendliest in the mainstream three-row crossover segment. So again, if you're looking for a Highlander or a Pilot and you're thinking to yourself that third row isn't quite wide enough, I really wish I could leave child seats latched in the second place, the Pathfinder is going to be an excellent option. And if you're not a huge fan of CVTs, now there's another option for you. I'll see all of you later.